Welcome to a new episode of Video Car Review. I'm tempted to say Ausfahrt TV, but now we call it Video Car Review, our reviews in what I call English, and I'm still your host, Mr. Z. Hello. Um, our reviews are pretty long. If you haven't seen them before, don't be scared, you know. Uh, we divided them in chapters, and uh, in the description of this very video, you find jump markers, and you can jump from chapter to chapter. Plus, our videos are always structured the same way, so you can easily compare different cars yourself. Okay, um, besides that, in the description you'll find all the technical data about this car. And I'm about to start, um, actually, I don't feel to, you know, I, I really don't feel like doing a moderation. I drove this baby one hour here in the uh, mountains uh, close to Valencia and had so much fun. I mean, so much fun. I couldn't stop driving. Um, but we are invited to do a, a review, a video review. So here I am showing this car and well, I will make it quick so I can still drive a little bit. Let's start. Just a little bit of history about this car. In 1998, Ford first uh, presented the Ford Focus. Uh, it was the successor of the Ford Escort, at least in Europe. In uh, 2000 and, uh, 2001, it was the most sold car worldwide. So uh, the people liked it, I guess. In 2002, they presented the four first RS models, first Ford Focus RS model, which had uh, 215 horses. In uh, 2004, they presented the second product generation. In 2009, the second Ford Focus RS with uh, 305 horses. It was a 2.5 liter um, petrol engine. In 2010, they made a limited edition 500 pieces of the Ford Focus RS 500, which had already 350 horses. And in 2011, they presented the third product generation of the Ford um, Focus. And uh, last year, uh, by the beginning of last year, they had the debut of the Ford Focus RS. We had a video about this as well. And uh, that's the car I'm driving today. I'm very excited. It's really it's as awesome as I expected it to be. At least in Germany, you can order this car right now. The production started in January 14th uh, in, um, uh, in Germany in a town called Saar Louis. Uh, do we have competitors? I guess quite a few. I'm just naming uh, the German ones because I'm such a patriot. Uh, so we got the Audi RS3, uh, the Mercedes-Benz A45 AMG or the Mercedes-AMG a45 uh, maybe the new bmw m2 even it's just a, a it only has rear wheel drive and maybe the golf r well this engine should be quite familiar to some of you uh, if you know the mustang was a 2.3 uh, liter ecoboost it's the same engine but it got a twin scroll uh, turbocharger as well as an intercooler and so a little bit more power than the mustang version besides that uh, the focus rs always comes with all wheel drive uh, with which 70 percent of all the torque can go to the rear axis and you can only order it with a manual six speed and here it is the heart of our test car and it says ford performance guys that's a 2.3 liter ford ecoboost engine a four cylinder with 350 horses it's good for maximum torque of three uh, 440 newton meters and you get them in a range between 2000 and 4500 rpm besides you have an overboost function so for 15 uh, seconds you can even boost the torque up to 470 newton meters <laughs> Okay, and now for you, all the basic specs you got to know about the Ford Focus RS. It accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 4.7 seconds. And it's the same like accelerating from 0 to 62 miles per hour. The top speed is reached at 266 km per hour or 165 miles per hour. 
The gas tank of the 2016 Ford Focus RS is good for 62 liters, which equals 16.4 gallons. Ford claims a fuel consumption of just 7.7 .7 liters on 100 kilometers or 30.5 miles per gallon, which means that under perfect conditions you can drive up to 800 kilometers or 500 miles without getting gas. In terms of CO2 emissions, the 2016 Ford Focus RS sets free 175 grams per kilometer, according to Ford. The Ford Focus RS has a length of 4.39 meters, which equals 173 inches, with a wheelbase of 2.65 meters, which equals 104 inches. It is 1.47 meters high, so 58 inches. And it is 1.82 meters wide, which equals 72 inches. From mirror tip to mirror tip, it's even 2.01 meters, or 79 inches. As of the turning circle, you need at least 11.9 meters or nine, uh, 39 feet of free space. The curb weight is 1,529 kilograms or 3,371 pounds. The admissible total weight is 2,025 kilograms, which equals 4,464 pounds. Pounds. I don't know the exact configuration of our test car, however, if you have a Ford Focus RS fully loaded with all the option, you pay in Germany around about 45,890 euros. Well, uh, two things um, first. First of all, it looks like a regular, now it doesn't look like a regular Ford Focus. No, obviously it doesn't. And I won't tell you about all the differences because it's complete different car actually uh, so I'm not saying well look at this front split and all that because you see it in the picture right uh, but I want to say that Ford made the uh, RS model 23% stiffer than the uh, regular model so um, it's not only a strong engine and some good brakes and some good tires no they made the whole car stiffer so you can enjoy your driving a little bit more I cannot say that I felt it you know but I feel a little bit more secure just knowing it and that's why I tell it to you uh, the other thing is I'm not speaking for your market now but at least for the German market so you have a price tag of 40,000 euros and some option adding up to with a fully loaded car around about 46,000 euros. And that's hot. I mean, really, look at BMW or Mercedes or Audi. It's not a premium car, but hell, I don't give a damn, you know, because I just want to drive and the driving fun. It doesn't mean, you know, that you have premium driving fun if you drive in one of the other cars. Uh, this is just pure fun i like it and i like the way they put the prices for instance big xenon headlights with a turning light as well as cornering light all included in the first price tag and i say all right what i don't like so much is the uh, day running as the led day running lights it could be a little bit more fancy but eh, hey, you know, am I looking at my uh, LED day running light while I'm driving and while I'm cornering? No, I'm not. So hey, you know, uh, it's okay. Uh, anything else? Oh yeah, one of my favorite uh, is I don't have a garage at home. You know, I park my street, uh, my, my car on the street, and now it's cold, freezing, winter time, minus eight degrees in Germany. So I don't know, 17 Fahrenheit, I guess. I don't know. Uh, however, as an option for just 200 euros, you can get a heated uh, front shield, front window, front shield, no, windscreen, well, a windscreen, whatever. It's heated by option and I like it because it helps you, you don't have to scratch the eyes off the glass and I like it. Well, um, this color, by the way, is called magnetic gray. It's one of five colors you can choose from right now. In Germany, white is for free. Everything else costs extra. And here he goes. See, that's the point, you know. All the other guys, they're driving by, having fun, and I'm standing here. Yeah, magnetic gray. Awesome, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Very awesome. Now, well, the coolest color at least for my taste, is nitrous blue. That's really awesome, a sticky blue, it catches your eye. Um, and they had some, some test cars here as well, but they were all gone when I was uh, asking for a car. Too sad. 
Okay, um, we got 19 inch alloys on the Ford Focus RS. Uh, you can choose between, I think, three different um, kind of alloys. And um, we got Brembo brakes here. In the front, we have 350 millimeters of diameter. And um, so far, they worked pretty good because we made it here and we were not very uh, slow. The brake calipers uh, in blue, that's an option. You have to pay in Germany 150 euros extra, but for both, you know, they're both blue then. And I think it's kind of funny because some manufacturers have blue calipers and uh, they are more, they're standing for efficiency or, you know, electric cars. But BMW has blue too, right? I think so, yeah. Um, however, our car is not equipped, but you can have tainted window in the rear as well, which might distract the people from looking uh, at this beast here. Well, I might say this is what I call a pretty decent rear of the car, pretty decent ending. A tiny spoiler, you know, uh, little exit pipes, and that's neat. No, actually, I think it's so damn awesome, the whole rear, you know. If I would buy this car, I would like to drive behind me to see it. I think it's the sexy side of the whole car. The front is nice too, don't get me wrong, but this ass is really awesome, at least for me. The, the spoiler itself is a little bit too big for me, but if it helps the car to stay on the road, fine, you know. My wife would kill me if I would buy a car with a spoiler. So probably if I order it, I will have to have a detached version, you know, that I can screw up and down uh, all the time. Uh, we got uh, rear lights with LED parts in it. So the light itself is LED light. Uh, but we got normal light bulbs here, even for the braking light. I'm shocked. So three light bulbs in here. Um, down here we find a big diffuser, helps the car as well stay on the road. Some really massive extra pipes. And they don't only look massive. I mean, that's a massive extra pipe, right? Two even. Uh, they sound good as well outside and inside. So I'm pretty pleased. And here we got the RS badge in blue as well. That's it, right? <laughs> Well, now I would like to invite you to follow me inside in the inside so I can show you all the interior. Uh, so far, well, the door first of all opens around about 80 degrees. It's not too big either. And we have a door sill panel, uh, an RS door sill panel, but it's not illuminated. It's just painting on the, the RS stuff. I wish I would get inside for driving, but you know, <laughs> let me show you around. Perfect. Um, we have got sports seats here. It's not as uh, really easy to just, you know, slide in, but I don't care. They're comfortable, they're tight, they're cool. I have to lean out a little bit if I open the door all the way, you know, but the door is not too heavy, so it's easy to close it. All right, welcome in the interior of the Ford Focus RS. And I want to be honest to you, getting in the car is not really easy, especially if you are a little bit bigger because you got the sport seats and climbing in here, especially if you have the steering wheel down, it's not as very easy, but it's worth it, of course, you know? Okay, uh, let's start out with our normal routine, uh, checking the material. We have soft touch all over the dashboard here. And then, well, I think uh, superior plastics up here and then cheap plastic down here. Plastic was well, soft touch on the top, plastic on the sides. Uh, so I think artificial leather or leather in the side. Um, we are sitting on uh, seats that are covered with leather or artificial. Well, I, I think it's leather on the sides and um, close in the middle and here as well. Well, yeah. What I like is uh, that we have this blue contrast stitching uh, everywhere in the door panels, on the seats, on the steering wheel, on the handbrake stick, and uh, even here on the armrest. So that's pretty neat. Uh, looks good. And um, you always have to keep in mind the price of the car. In Germany, the price tag 40,000 euros. Uh, this is in relation. I'm fine. I'm really fine. Um, I have enough space for myself. I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11". Lots of headspace. Um, 
and I feel fine. I feel uh, melted with the seat. Seats are really awesome and everything is in reach. I drove with Toby here for a while and um, we didn't feel tightened up or anything, so you have enough of space here. I'm Toby and 195 centimeters tall, so 5'6", six, no 6'5", six sorry. Um, and I have to say that I really, really like the Recaro sport seats. Um, and they're actually the first Recaro seats I've seen where I can adjust the height of the, of the um, however to call this part. But yeah, I like this a lot. Um, and I have to say, like, if you have, if you have uh, a tummy like me and you look a little bit, you know, um, then you should really give the seats a try and um, sit here a little bit longer because you're tightened up a little bit. Tightened up is not the, the right word, but you really feel the pressure of the side cushions. I like that a lot. I really do. But um, for you, it might be, I don't know, the wrong seat or whatever. Um, yeah. My leg space, um, in terms of the steering wheel and the steering, is perfectly fine. I had no problems there. But when it comes to the pedals, I have to say that I would wish that the seat could be um, a little bit further back, so I'd have more space there. But like, the, like this, it's okay. The other way around would be perfect. Um, yeah, the steering wheel, everything is fine. I can reach everything I want. My head space is um, okay. I can barely put a fist between my head and the ceiling. Um, that's all right. And all in all, I really like it, and I'm giving back to you, Jan. Uh, talking about using the car, the display of the infotainment is not facing me. It's not driver-oriented. Uh, we have a whole bunch of buttons on the steering wheel. I haven't recognized uh, before starting to review this or film the review because I was so focused on driving. Uh, well, yeah, we got a bunch of buttons and buttons here and there and there. That's okay. It works. Works fine for me, at least. Um, Okay, so let's start out with our normal routine. Um, you can adjust the height of the safety belt on your shoulder, which is not always the uh, case in sports cars. And that's the size of the seat belts. I think everybody will be fine. I told you already I'm sitting on sports seats, uh, leather and clothes materials, um, recover sports seats, by the way. And uh, you cannot adjust uh, the side support, not on the cushion, not on the uh, back. But uh, when I got in the car, I was thinking, wow, cool seats. And then Toby, who has a complete different uh, shape than I do, uh, got in the car. And first thing he said, well, awesome seats. So those seats seem to work for a bunch of different people. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, if you tend to drive this car and you're not satisfied with the seats, please let me know. I'm really interested why. I think they're pretty awesome. Um, they're adjustable in height, you know, manually, of course, and you can scoot back and forward and I think even a little bit more but my legs are too long for this <coughs> and um, what else is there and you can heat them up with three intensities if you want to all right okay so here we got the steering wheel you can adjust it manually and that's just fine for me could come out a little bit more but I was fine driving this way um, it's coated with leather, or has a leather coat uh, with this blue contrast stitching, as I said. The leather is perforated at the side where you have your hands all the time, which is nice if you have sweaty hands. Um, and uh, it's a multifunctional steering wheel. First of all, we have got this RS badge down here as well. So it's a multifunctional uh, steering wheel. We got buttons on the left side, a crosshair and an OK button to uh, navigate through the board computer. On the right side, same procedure for the infotainment system. By the way, Sync 2, it's not uh, the third version yet, but it's the second version and it's included in the basic, basic package. And on the left side down here, we have the buttons for the um, for the cruise control. Yeah, everything good in reach. Uh, something uh, which was, uh, well, uh, different for me, on the turning, uh, on the switch for the turning light or the turning indicator, we have a push button and you have to hold it a little bit to change the uh, suspension setup from normal to sport. Uh, and the driving mode switch is down here next to the stick shift. That's cool, isn't it? I like it. Uh, okay. 
I'm, I'm getting carried away. Uh, let's have a look in the mirrors. They're not too big. Actually, they're kind of small. And uh, I wouldn't say they're sexy shape, but they're fine to uh, have, a, have a look at the traffic behind you. In the rear mirror, in the inner rear mirror, mirror you see the full uh, rear window, which is good too. Uh, but we've lowered the headrest of the back seat, so... Um, well, you can see just all right. If I turn my head around the shoulder uh, on the left side, no blind spot. Even the B pillar is pretty big. The other way around over my right shoulder, B pillar, well, okay. C pillar, fine. Between the C and the D pillar, we got a little window and the D pillar is not small, really. Well, a tiny blind spot, I would say. But you can, you know, um, if you watch in the mirror first and then turn your head like this, it works fine. You're safe. Um, okay, uh, behind the steering wheel, we have a classical cockpit, uh, two round gauges. Uh, on the left side, we got a, a ref meter up to 8,000 RPM with a red range starting at 6,500. And on the right side, the speedometer going up to 300 uh, kilometers per hour. The car goes to 66, so you have a little bit of rest there. In between the two round gauges, we have a small control uh, in the lower part uh, where you see the fuel control and the temperature of the cooling water or the coolant temperature. That's uh, the concrete thing. And um, above this, we have a little display, could be much bigger for my taste for the board computer. Uh, here we got um, different settings. So, um, first of all, it starts out with a uh, with a cluster of information. Uh, so we've driven 78 kilometers so far. We have a uh, we have an average fuel consumption of 19.9 uh, .9 liters on 100 kilometers. Uh, currently, we are not wasting any fuel, and we have a reach of 237 kilometers left. And if I uh, move down first part, I see the digital speed, which I like. I drove this way the whole time because it's always, you know, a little bit fuzzy to uh, to see the scale here, right? And uh, then we have all the other stuff I just named. Uh, you can scroll through them and uh, see them separately. Uh, besides that, we have the um, average speed here. Well, we lost some. Actually, when I did the German version, it was 53. So on the 38 kilometers over a little bit of highway and um, the country roads, we had an average speed of 53 kilometers per hour. Pretty awesome. Uh, the whole thing works as a split screen if you're using the GPS and navigation system. Then it's uh, tightened a little bit and on the right side you see the instructions from the uh, navigation system. If you want to, you can use two different board computer setups and you got information as well as options, for instance, for the uh, assist systems, uh, for the setup of the car itself and the... Uh, vision yeah as i said could be much bigger for my taste but well it's just the way it is and i can live with it too on the other hand we have the uh, infotainment display easy to reach uh, read fine to use everything is okay um, and up here we got uh, some more gauges a little you know like a hood sort of um, with the oil temperature, the oil pressure, and the pressure of the turbocharger, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I'm not sure yet. I'm confused. However, um, by the way, we have a rear camera as well in our car. So that's an option. You see it full uh, in the full window. Uh, you got indicator lines, so how close the things are, and you see the lines while you steer where you're driving, so this is fine. Camera is not sharp at all. It's uh, kind of weird too. Oh, you can even zoom in. And on the right side, you see the car as an illustration uh, with the sensors. So if someone is walking behind the car, or you encounter an object, uh, you see the sensor stuff as well. Fine. Uh, there's supposed to be an uh, ambient light, 
it's just I don't see it. It's just too bright. Uh, but we will uh, see the dark here in a few hours, and I hope we still have the car by then. And uh, I will try to film it so we can show you at least how it looks like. Uh, we don't have a uh, sunroof in the car. In the car configurator on the Ford Germany uh, page, uh, there was an option, but I couldn't choose it. So I'm not really sure if you can uh, have a sunroof in the car or not. I'm sorry. Last but not least, uh, let's honk the horn for a little check. Well, could sound a little bit cooler, but it's just fine for the sky, you know. <laughs> All right, let's rock through the compartments real quick uh, because I would like to have it as a daily driver and I think you as well. It's a little bit too expensive for a real track tool. Uh, in the door panels we have enough space not only for this tiny bottle of course. I think 1.5 liters might fit in here well. Uh, the only sad thing about the whole compartment is it's all hard plastic. So whatever you put in there, if it's, you know, Fuddling around, you will have some noises and will probably scratch, but you know, who cares. Uh, next, on the left to the steering wheel, we have a little compartment. I think here are coin holders. And I don't know what you put in there. Maybe keys, maybe sunglasses. I don't know. You tell me if you bought this car. And no compartments here. And the next one is right here. First of all, here we got the USB port and a little slide in. My iPhone is just too big for this piece, but uh, like an iPhone 5 fit will fit in here just with ease, no problem. I'm just seeing in the German review I overlooked this 12 volt outlet because I was so fascinated by the stick shift. So here we got a 12 volt outlet. Uh, my phone is still charging. Under this drawer we find uh, a very flexible cup holder so we put this bottle in here and press those things and now the bottle is not shaking around and you know behind there's space as well or we don't use them and have a little other drawer and now if we have a bigger bottle it fits in here as well it's not sticking up here but goes down here or you just use it as a hidden you know compartment cool awesome yeah whatever uh, let's close this baby. This is the armrest. I can adjust it just, you know, pushing forward and backward. Or I just open the whole thing somehow. Oh, just open it. So here we got a little drawer in here. Some more space. And here's another 12 volt outlet, another USB port, an SD card reader, and a line in. Everything you need right on your hands. Fine. Okay, um, what else is there? Nothing below the seats, no nets, no nothing. So here's the gloves compartment. It's illuminated, you have a pen holder. It's not too big and they didn't give us the board material, so I don't really have an idea how big it really is. Some stuff will fit in here, but it's not like a huge compartment. We got sun shields here with makeup mirrors on both sides, illuminated from both sides as well. And a little rubber band for tickets or cards. Here we got another compartment for shades or glasses. It's pretty tiny, you know, so if you have big Ray-Bans, you know, poser Ray-Bans, they won't fit in here, but at least you have a compartment. We got handles on all four doors. And here's the entry light as well as the reading light for the passenger and the driver or the other way around. And this is really, you know, witchcraft and technology for me. They use one spot for both reading lights and it works. Fascinating. Really cool. Um, overall, I'm done, I guess, you know. Yeah, it's a driver's car. Let's drive. Come on. Now I have to check out the back too. Wow. So we got five doors. It's a family car, actually, you know, tell my wife, family car. So uh, let's look on the rear bench. And I tell you already, it's awesome for the kids, at least for my kids. They will have a blast on the rear, really, whatever there is. All right, let's hop inside. Come on, kids. Yay, perfect. No, seriously, it's not too bad at all. I'm not kidding, really. Come on, follow me inside. 
All right, I'm sitting in the rear now, and I was telling you I will say just the positive stuff, so my kids will uh, believe it's a good car, uh, but it's not so bad. I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11", I'm sitting here just fine. I have enough space for my head, uh, I have enough space for my legs even, and uh, to the side I haven't any problems either. The only thing I don't like too much is that uh, the seats in the rear are not formed out. In the front we have this awesome sports seats, this awesome Recaro seats, in the rear it's just like you know a normal bench so you're driving in the front like yeah yeah and your kids like whoa whoa they might like it they might not especially if the kids are your mother-in-law it might be a problem i'm not sure but just warning you you know okay um by the way the material we're sitting here on close in the middle we have a leather stripe and on the sides there's a tiny leather stripe as well the door's pretty much the same like in the front Hard plastic, hard plastic, hard plastic, a leather stripe and hard plastic. All right, um, well, you know, I'm a rather small guy, even so I consider myself a tall guy, but let's see if Toby can sit in the rear. The seat is put in Jan's position and I have to say that if Jan is driving like this and I'm sitting here that I have not really much space. My legs are limited a lot, like really a lot. And if you, if I want to put them a little bit more comfy, I'll use my, my usual trick. I'll just put them a little bit to the sides and slide down the seat. So I have more space there and a little bit more head space. I can put my flat hand between the ceiling and my head now. Um, but yeah, comfortable is something else. But I still would say that I would um, drive like this for half an hour to an hour maybe. But um, if you really have to drive with four grown-ups in here and one of them as tall as I am or whatever, then I'd say that you are able to arrange yourself somehow. Um, because we tried it out, Jan was scooting a little bit to the front so he could still drive. And I tried to, to sit here and that worked a little bit better. And if you if you have to, I think it will work, even if you're taller. And I would say if, if the seat is put like a little bit to the front so Jan can still drive, I would even sit here for three to four hours or something like this. But if it's like this and um, I mean you see it, I have no, no head space and no leg space, then I would say half an hour to an hour at max. Well thanks Toby and now I can go on, check the compartments. In the door panel we have a compartment, two bottles this size will fit in here and next to the door we have some other compartments where I don't know what they're good for. Actually I think it's just space and they made a compartment out of it. If you have any idea, let me know. I think it's pretty useless. Um, in the seats, uh, they are spared out a little bit. So Toby just mentioned it. Uh, here we got a, a little bag as well for some material you can put in there, like magazines or whatever. In the center, we don't have nothing but a tiny compartment, all hard plastic, no power, no uh, whatsoever, no cup holder, no nothing, because uh, there's no armrest in the center. But at least for the kids, we got Isofix hooks. The locks of the safety belts are stiff, so kids can buckle up themselves with ease. But the length of the safety belt, I'm not sure. So, dear daddy, if your kids still need a child seat or even worse, a baby shelf, worse because more. Uh, length of safety belt is needed for baby shelf you better drive uh, to your local dealer and check this out i'm not sure we don't have a baby seat here or a baby shelf or b child seat okay uh hooks got 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 uh we got a uh, reading light for both outer seats same solution like in the front this one and all thing witchcraft and technology handles uh, with little uh, hooks for a jacket on the side uh, we can roll down the window here fully automatically, but it's not rolling in the whole way. I hate it. Why are they doing it? Well, okay, my kids will have to deal with this, I guess. Um, however, there's at least a protection, I guess. Yep. So you can't harm yourself or your kids while rolling up the windows. And uh, did I miss anything? Mm -mm. No, I guess that's it from the rear. So let's hop and check out the trunk. Okay, before we get to the trunk, and the trunk is important for me too, because, uh, well, you know, if I buy this car, I need to, you know, get groceries, do the errands. 
this sort of stuff. So uh, before I show you the trunk, here's the key. It's a simple plastic key, not too exciting. At least an RS logo on one side. On the other side, three buttons, unlock, lock, and uh, open the trunk or rather unlocks the trunk. So I got either this button here or I can just push here. But since I got the key here, I press it and it opens. Not really. All right, um, just so you see I'm well prepared. My measuring tape. So the lid opens up to two meters and there's a little bit of stuff up there so 210 which is for my non-metric friends um, almost 83 inches so you need a little bit of height if you have a small garage think about it or make some you know carpet under the ceiling whatever um, however the trunk the trunk really makes me sad because i want to buy this car so bad and the trunk is really really small Good thing is, our tripod case fits in here. Sad news is, aside to this tripod case, nothing really else fits in there. Uh, we got a, a volumina here of 260 liters, around about 9 uh, cubic feet. And um, yesterday we reviewed the Smart 4.2 convertible. And its trunk has 230 liters. So this trunk is just 30 liters more than the trunk of the uh, Smart 4.2 and this is a little bit sad for me. However, it looks at least big and uh, I would just tell my wife, it is huge, look at this, don't measure it, you know, <laughs> looks good. Okay, um, so let's look inside. Okay, first of all, we're going to remove the privacy blinds here. Um, I learned in the German clip I did something stupid, you just push it in and pull it out perfect otherwise you just fool around half an hour all right that's the trunk so far we can lift the floor up here we got most probably a subwoofer i don't know whatever it is a uh, tire kit warning triangle warning vest gloves and so on and a hook for the track even more warning vest and here we got a little bit of storage as well tiny storage at least so put this down again. Here we got a leash or something. Down here is another leash. So maybe the warning triangle will fit in here as well. Here's a rubber band for whatever purpose. And we got hooks on both sides for even to, well, most likely shopping bags. And we got lights on both sides as well. Well, that's the trunk so far. Uh, I can easily flips the backrest of the rear seat 40% on the right and 60% on the left and again thanks to Brian my measuring tape um, so the trunk is round about uh, 66 68 centimeters uh, deep which is 26.5 inches it is uh, 103 centimeters wide, which, which is 40.5 inches. And the problem of the trunk is the height. You only have a 36 centimeter of height, so 14 inches. And that's why the whole thing is so small. If uh, we flip the rear seats, we have um, round about 136 centimeters, so 53.5 inches. And if I push the passenger seat to the very front, it's round about 160 centimeters, so 63 inches. Well, if you want to lift something in the trunk, you have to lift it up 62 centimeters or 24 inches. And then it goes down just a tiny bit, round about uh, 6 centimeters, so 2.5 inches. But it's not, you know, a plain surface, so you can scoot things in. And um, if we have everything flipped, we have a volumina of 1,040 five uh, liters which equals 37 uh, cubic feet yeah so far so good we can load up to 496 kilograms inside the ford focus is which equals 1093 pounds of which we can store up to 75 kilograms or 165 pounds on the roof so far there is not a way to install a hook on the ford focus rs well 
Well, uh, hold on <laughs> just a second. This is not the regular way we uh, talk about our driving imp impressions. Normally I just drive the car, film myself a little bit and talk to you guys. Uh, however, here we had a little misunderstanding with Ford. Uh, we had, uh, on the first time we just reviewed the car, you know, we started our review, we well, walk around the car, hop inside and so on. And we didn't have enough time to do the driving part as well. But our schedule said, well, uh, the next day, so today, you have five more hours. And we were like, oh, relaxing, you know. Shh. It will work. Uh, so once we got here to the circuit of Valencia, they told us, well, you can keep the car. We need it back, you know. All you can do is drive with another car on the circuit here. And so um, I will have to dub the driving experience. Um, I have to a little bit of GoPro um, material that I put uh, on uh, or over my uh, dubbing and I think it's okay for you. I, I hope it's okay for you. I apologize, but you know, we can't uh, do more than we can do, you know, so and I really didn't feel like uh, moderating or telling you anything while I was driving on track. That doesn't work, you know, you, you cannot focus on track. Well, I cannot focus on track and at the same time do some moderation. So I apologize, but here we go. Alright, we got four different driving modes. It's normal, sport, uh, track and drift and uh, those are influencing the um, uh, all-wheel drive powertrain, uh, the suspension, the steering, the engine itself, the ESC and the sound of the exit pipe. Um, driving the car, the engine with its uh, 355 horses is just powerful enough for about everything. Uh, we drove on the Spanish highway, which was quite not really satisfying because there's a speed limit of 120 kilometers per hour but then we drove through the countryside uh, up and down the mountains on really curvy country roads and this was a hell of a lot of fun you know um, full uh, throttle to the curves braking uh, really hard and then accelerating out of the curve again and this on and on and on the whole time uh, so you could really feel uh, the power of the engine I was overtaking even once or two, two times on the country roads and you really have the power uh, that you expect and it's it's feeling good so uh, no complaints about the engine the 2.3 liter four cylinder engine with its 350 horses uh, the manual transmission it works fine it's uh, the, it has very short shifting weights it's very precise and um, while driving on the country roads I was uh, thinking that the second gear could be a little bit longer on track it was a third gear overall I think I'm just not used to uh, shift myself anymore <laughs> I'm such a you know automatic transmission guy right now so uh, you just have to shift uh, a little bit more but it's fun it's really fun and it works fine so um, no complaints about the uh, manual stick shift at all. Talking about the engine sound, uh, first of all, uh, outside uh, the car passing by, at least in sport mode, the car has a really nice sound. It's not too loud, but however, it sounds pretty nice. Um, inside, it is an artificial sound. It uh, gets support by uh, speakers, so inside it's uh, a little bit different, but I like it too, you know. Actually, I like the idea of having uh, artificial sound inside which gives you a sporty feeling while outside the other people are not getting disturbed. Um, you have a normal setup for the sound and a sport setup. In the sport mode uh, you get bang and burbles uh, so whenever you shift or before you shift you know you have this um, special sound that makes you smile whenever you shift. The suspension has two different settings, normal and sport. Um, the normal suspension is already uh, around about 33% stiffer on the front and 38% stiffer on the rear uh, compared to the ST model. Uh, while when you put the car in sport, it's even 40% uh, stiffer than the normal suspension. Uh, I have to say that I was pretty amazed that once driving a normal, you really have to pretty comfortable ride it's not you know that you hump uh, hop around like a rabbit all the time whenever the street gets a little bit bad actually it's uh, really comfortable uh, however in sport on track or even you know on the country roads where you put the car in sport uh, as well uh, you have a nice setup and the car really is good on the street and it's fun to drive when it comes to the all-wheel drive powertrain they say that up to 70% uh, regular 
of the tour go to the rear axis and uh, on the rear axis you can have up to 100% of the torque on each wheel so um, which you know is more likely for the torque vectoring so on the rear axis the torque vectoring is based on uh, the power you know you get power between uh, the two wheels while on the front axis uh, they have um, torque vectoring by braking so once you take one uh, corner you you know the inner wheels uh, on the <coughs> On the rear axis, just not getting enough power, while on the front exit, it's uh, it gets a little braking, while the outer wheels on the rear axis get a lot of power, uh, or all the power, and on the uh, front axis, just gets no braking. Um, driving on track and on the street, that's really fun. If you put the car um, on, on track mode, um, you have a different uh, ESC setup. So it's actually there's three modes, normal, sport and off. Um, Ford is pretty proud to say, well, we can really turn the ESC off. Uh, however, I, I didn't do it, I have to confess. Um, my friend here, um, who was on, with me on track, he, he said he didn't really feel a big difference between the for, uh, sports setup and the off. However, um, if you put it on sport, you know, the rear is really shaking a little bit more uh, in a fun way, you know, so um, even on track, if you want to, you can really drift around a little bit. And um, even on the normal streets, you feel like the back is working for you, you know, once you, you go through the corners and um, that's, that's a lot of fun. Just be careful, you know, there are other people driving around there as well. Um, the Ford Focus RS comes with a launch control. All you have to do is to put in first gear and uh, then uh, put your foot on the throttle so it uh, the engine gets more than 5000 RPM. Um, and then you just let, let the clutch go and it accelerates. Uh, just you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, you have to remember that you have to shift. Uh, however, to enable the launch control, you have to go into the board computer, you know, um, go to the right first then three steps down to the no no go to the left first then three steps down to the right to the right and okay then the launch control is activated and you can use it i think it will be fine you know for a traffic light if it's long enough red if you're really into this stuff i was pretty uh, amazed by the steering it's very direct uh, it takes two complete turns of the steering wheel from one side to the other and um, well, in the basic setup, you, you have to use more power on the steering wheel than in the Ford Focus ST. And uh, once you put it in a sport mode, the steering, you even need more, of, you know, force on the steering wheel. However, I uh, have no complaints at all about the steering. I think the steering is part of the whole um, driving fun you get from the Ford Focus RS. Uh, I have to say, I, I didn't, you know, uh, use too much parking spots. Uh, just leaving the area where we picked up the car, I had to back up because, you know, <laughs> the car was not turning around in the circle. Uh, good enough. So um, in daily use, uh, the whole steering might be a little bit too hard for, for you, but uh, overall, if you drive uh, for fun, it's just perfect. We got Brembo Monoblock uh, brake calipers uh, with four piston with four brake pistons in the front. Uh, the disc have a diameter of 350 millimeters. Um, Ford uh, developed a special cooling for the brakes. You have a jet stream under the car, uh, specially made for cooling the brakes. And Ford claims that the brakes are good for uh, 30 minutes of uh, um, track usage. Um, so. Um, you can use the car on track with a full brake power for 30 minutes and then you have to, you know, give the car a little rest. All in all, I have to say, I haven't had so much fun in uh, a compact car for a long time, really. And I've driven the RS3, I've driven the uh, CLA 45 AMG, and I'm not sure about the BMW M2, I'm spared out for this event. However, I really, yeah, I really enjoyed the Ford Focus RS. And the special uh, all-wheel drive setup with the drift mode uh, makes the fun just complete. Yeah, talking about the drift mode, you can k put the car in drift mode, uh, well, don't do it on regular streets unless you really know what you're doing. 
and it's really easy to start drifting this way you know uh, all you gotta do is drive into a circle you know uh, pull the steering wheel just a little bit and then put your foot on the throttle and uh, the car will just you know come uh, with the back and you can really keep it in drift even on concrete um, which is pretty amazing I would love to have uh, the car in winter time with a little bit of snow because then it's even easier and you don't ruin your, your uh, tires However, um, it works already in concrete, which was pretty amazing, you know, and uh, <coughs> and I did all this drifting uh, in first gear, you know, so you don't have to have so much speed as uh, you normally do. It's really fun, and uh, yeah. just be aware the uh, tires uh, have a special uh, spe specification, special Michelin tires, and at least in Germany, they will cost each tire around about 350 euros, so you have to keep this in mind while, you know, drifting in the parking lot. The Ford Focus RS comes uh, with hardly any assist systems. We have a uh, cruise control, well, you know, just the cruise control, and uh, that's pretty much it. You can get the uh, active city or stop assist or whatever, but no blind spot warning, no traffic sign or recognition, and no uh, whatsoever. In our car, or <coughs> no, in the basic setup, the Ford Focus RS comes with a 7 speaker Sony uh, production system. I can't tell you anything about it. And uh, that's about it. Now, uh, one more thing. Um, you might uh, recognize that on the street we drove with a regular Recaro Sport seats while uh, being on track. We had the uh, special sport seats. Uh, I was asked in the German review uh, which I would prefer, and I always say, well, I like the, um, the normal Recaro Sport seats because uh, they feel tighter for me. Uh, but I talked to uh, some colleagues and they prefer the sporty version. And just keep in mind, only the regular uh, sports seats uh, are available uh, that you can adjust them in height. So especially if you're a taller guy, uh, keep in mind that, you know, you have to fix the seats in another way. And if you uh, switch cars with another, with another driver, you have to keep in mind that, you know, you can adjust the seat in height. <laughs> Well, yesterday we had a day for just driving around. Today we went to the Circuit Valencia, so the racetrack here in Valencia, not the Formula 1 racetrack, a little bit outside, and we were able to drive the car on track as well as a um, handling area for, for the drifting stuff. And, um, well, I, I'm just coming to an end. I could go on and on and on and on, but, uh, you know, you don't have time and all that. So, uh, our points, driving fun. Yes, yes, yes. In every mode, uh, in any condition, it's fun to drive. Even in the city, it's fun to drive. Um, the curvy mountain road, that was my favorite. Um, I would prefer going there again uh, instead of the racetrack, to be honest, because it's just, you know, that's natural. That's... That's just the way life is. Uh, it was fun on the racetrack as well, and it was a hell fun to use the drifting mode to burn some rubber uh, that you didn't have to pay for. Extra bonus. So the car is fun overall. Driving fun, perfect, excellent. Really, I'm I'm not only surprised; all my expectations were fulfilled. So thumbs up. Use it as a daily driver. Well, the trunk is uh, sort of a little joke, little and joke, you know. It's just too small. Um, but, you know, if I really think about it, uh, my tripod case fits in there, another suitcase, and I can put the back on the, on the uh, rear bench. So, uh, <laughs> not really. Well, if, if you want to go with four grown-ups, you really have to check uh, that they are not too tall. So Toby cannot sit behind me. I'm 180 centimeters, so 5'11". He's 195 centimeters, so 6'5". Uh, and the other way around is not working either. Two people my size can sit behind each other, so just keep this in mind. Uh, if you consider buying this car and you want to, you know, uh, give passengers a ride every once in a while or more often. 
Um, fuel consumption, I cannot really tell you anything. Uh, on the first day, we had a fuel consumption of uh, almost 20 liters on 100 kilometers, and I, well, I really pushed the hard car. Uh, the, the car hard, I'm sorry. I really pushed it up and down the mountains, uh, really, you know, uh, full throttle all the way uh, to the curves and full brake and again full throttle. Uh, so I think in daily drive, in normal life, you can uh, use uh, or you can get along with less fuel. Um, but I really need to have this car for at least two weeks to give you a serious number, a serious, um, yeah, serious number. That's it. Um, comfort. I'm pretty pleased. Uh, in the normal mode, the car is quite comfortable indeed. Um, and if you put it on sport and suspension and with the two modes gets on sport, it's stiff and it's good for track even. Um, but uh, the, the more interesting part is I expect a race car or a fast car, a sporty car to be um, stiff with a suspension when I need it. But most likely when you, you try to drive it in a comfortable way, it sucks, you know, it's still like hopping around like a little rabbit. And here the comfort setting is quite nice. I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased, really. So um, I got everything, I guess. Uh, all in all, I'm just saying perfect car for me, really. Um, my wife wouldn't like the spoiler. Besides that, I really, uh, I'm honestly thinking about it because the price is really cool and um, you don't have a competitor in this price range that gives you this much uh, driving fun. And thinking about just having a car that supplies you as much fun as you want while you drive, uh, that's really a cool thing. I am really curious how, how much um, units they will sell. I think quite a few. Okay, that's it. Um, if you liked our review, please give us a thumb up. If you have any questions, put them below in the comment field. Um, tell your friends about us if you like our format. If you want to support us financially, you know, money, 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 uh, we got Patreon and Tippy um, just linked in the description of the video. And I'm just saying goodbye and so long. I hope to see you next time in our next English uh, review. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm Mr. Z. Stay tuned.